This video will cover the steps to configure the VLAN feature on the QB MP5054, 2054, and 5012 series radios. This video is not intended to address the VLAN protocols, terminology, and implementation at the network level. Proper VLAN configuration requires that the user has adequate understanding and experience of both VLAN protocol and general networking. Please contact your network administrator before attempting any configuration changes on your network. Note, incorrect VLAN configuration may cause loss of management access to the QP slash MP radios. All of the VLAN settings are located in the BSU. The SU does have an option to control its own settings that is only after version 500. And we're going to go ahead and cover this. Now to access it, go ahead and log into the BSU, click on configure VLAN BSU table, and you should see this. The BSU supports three VLAN modes, transparent, trunk, and mixed. These are as follows. The 5054 series support the following VLAN modes. Transparent mode. This mode is equivalent to no VLAN support and is the default mode. It is used when the device behind the SU and BSU are both VLAN aware and unaware. The BSU SU transfer both tagged and untagged frames received in the Ethernet or warp interface. Both tagged and untagged management frames can access the device. This mode is available on both the SU and the BSU. Trunk mode. This mode is used when all devices behind the SU and BSU are VLAN aware. The SU and BSU transfer only tag frames received in the Ethernet or warp interface. Both tagged and untagged management frames can access the device. This mode is available on both the SU and on the BSU. Access mode. This mode is used when the device behind the SU is VLAN unaware. Frames received in the Ethernet interface are tagged with the configured access VLAN ID before forwarding them to the warp interface. Both tagged and untagged management frames can access the device from the warp interface. However, only untagged management frames can access the device from the Ethernet interface. This mode is available only on the SU. Mix mode. This mode is used when the device behind the SU sends both tagged and untagged data. Frames to and from the Ethernet interface behind the SU can be tagged or untagged. Tag frames received in the Ethernet interface are compared against the SU's trunk table and only packets whose VLAN ID matches the trunk table are forwarded. All other packets are dropped. Untagged traffic is forwarded without any restrictions. If the BSU is in mixed mode, the SU can be in trunk, access, transparent, or mixed mode. This mode is available on both SU and on the BSU. The rest of the features in the BSU table are the management VLAN ID. This is configurable any mode. The management VLAN ID has a default value of untagged and may be configured with a value in the range of 1 to 4094. If you are using a separate VLAN management ID, please make sure that you enter it here. It also is going to have to be entered in the BSU VLAN table, which we're going to cover later on. You have the management priority. The management priority values range from 0 to 7, and the default priority is 0. Then you have the relay flag. When this flag is enabled, the BSU relays phrase between the SU and the same BSU. Note, this feature is applicable for trunk and mix modes only. Now that we covered some of the BSU VLAN options, we're going to go ahead and actually configure the BSU for VLAN use. Okay. Now, depending on what method you're going to be connecting the base station to, transparent, trunk, or mix, okay, it's really going to depend on how this is all going to flow. But in our case, let's just say an example, we're going to set it to trunk. Trunk indicates that the base station is connected to a switch, VLAN aware switch, that is already set to trunk and it's going to support whatever VLANs we want. In this particular case, we have VLANs 5 and 6. Right, to do so, just go ahead and click Add Entry Table. Go ahead and add, enter whatever you want. Click OK. Click Add. OK, come back here. Now, if we click on the table, as you can see, it's here. Now, that's basically it. Now, you have to make sure that if you have 
four, five, six, or whatever VLANs you're going to want to pass through the base station. You have to make sure that each one of them is in the BSU VLAN table, including the managing VLAN ID. It's extremely important. If you are using a VLAN tag to manage the radio, you have to make sure it's entered here. So if you want to pass three VLANs, you're going to have to have four VLANs, which includes the VLAN management ID. So now the next step is to go ahead and configure the SUs. Now, for me, I only have one subscriber at this particular point. So if you have more connected to it, they will automatically pop up. Now, you could manually add them to the radio by clicking Add Table. Okay, just go ahead and do the MAC address, fill the information out. I'm going to cover it here. But if you have 20 connected, all 20 are going to show up in the SU table, and you can manage them one by one. Okay, so I only have one index here. I'm going to go ahead and click Edit, and I'm going to go ahead and cover this really quick. So this is the MAC address, the wireless MAC address of the radio right here. Okay, uh, the SU supports transparent trunk access and mixed. Okay. If it is going to be in access mode, access mode is only one VLAN. That means that's what's connected to the SU is not VLAN aware. Okay, so in our particular case, we have VLANs five or six. So in the VLAN access ID, I could go ahead and put in VLAN number five, and nothing else really, because the rest will not matter. The only thing I care about is that it's going to be VLAN access ID number five. That means that this particular SU is not part of VLAN number five. That's an access mode. Now, if I do trunk mode, trunk mode is going to be a little different. Let's say doing trunk mode, click OK. Now I would have to go over here and set my VLANs. Now, this goes all the way up to 16, so you could have up to 16 VLANs. So if I'm connected to a VLAN aware device, a VLAN aware switch or a PC or NIC that has VLAN aware capabilities on the NIC, I could go ahead and select five or six. You could do both, just as long as the VLAN NIC switch has those VLANs in there too. Okay, that's done. Go ahead and click OK. The same thing with managing VLAN ID. Make sure that the VLAN management ID is entered correctly and that it does match the one on the base station. Now, they don't necessarily have to match, but you means you would have to have two separate managing VLAN IDs configured on the switch, and the BSU table is also going to have that particular VLAN ID as well. After that's done, the radio is ready for VLAN operation. As mentioned, by default, all of the configuration and the SU are controlled by the BSU, meaning that you configure all of the settings on the BSU, the BSU table, and the SU table, as we've covered before. Now, going from version 5.0.0, you have the ability to control the SU's VLAN table from each individual SU. To do so, just log on to the SU, click on Configure VLANs, and you're going to have this option over here. All right, just set it to enable, click OK. Now, as you can see, you'll have the exact same options as you did in the BSU table. Now, what's going to happen is if you set this to enable, it's going to override the BSU table. So whatever you have over here is going to be overwritten by this. So you have a choice. Either do it locally on each individual SU, just by enable, or by default, have the BSU send all of the information to the SU and have it all in one location configuration wise on the BSU itself. To learn more about Proxim Wireless and our solutions, please visit us at Proxim.com or follow us at Twitter at Proxim.